So as you're driving, you can actually have your finger on the on the hole down below, and you should be able to feel the peg starting to come through. It's a large project, so we split it into two separate week-long classes. And this is the finish of the second week class, and we're raising the frame right here. We went with a double stud wall. What this means is that rather than a single stud cavity, uh, two stud walls are built with a space separating the framing such that the framing does not continue all the way from the interior of the building to the exterior. There are four essential rules to achieving good straw bill installation in this climate. The first is what we like to call good shoes. The necessary aspect of having a really good lift off the ground for those bales. So they need to be protected from snow that's gonna pile up on the ground, from a splashback from rain, from capillary wicking through the foundation or through contact with the ground at the base of the wall. So one of the first things we think about when trying to install bales very well in this climate is protecting from ground moisture. And how we do that is through good shoes. So we have a stem wall of the foundation that comes up to where those bales are beginning up above what is going to be finished grade. You'll see another double stud wall running all the way along the bottom perimeter of the insulated part of our structure. That double stud wall we're referring to as a knee wall, it's a partial wall. The reason there's two stud walls uh, is because they are built to accommodate the width of our straw bales. The straw bales are about 18 inches wide the way we're going to be installing them. And so we're building out that double stud wall to accommodate the, weight of those bale, the width of those bales and be able to fully support them. We've gone all the way around this window and thinned out uh, our air barrier. I'm just ensuring a good seal up along the top where I've run a bead of caulk and then I've applied this strip of roofing felt. And now I have an L bend of a piece of diamond lath that I'm attaching. So the roofing felt functions as our air barrier. So our edge of our plaster is going to be running right along this piece of wood. And we know that because wood and plaster are very different materials, the wood is going to shrink and expand and move very differently than the plaster. And there's likely to be a gap that's going to open up here. So we basically create a control joint or an air barrier behind the plaster. Uh, the plaster functions as an, as an air barrier where it is whole, but at its edges we need to do something extra. We're putting the base coat plastering onto the uh, north wall. We're putting a uh, about an inch thick off of the straw bale to give it a nice coat so it stays waterproof. Yeah. 